Well, thank you all for coming, too. And um, we really are lucky to have such a great venue and to have Marcia and Phil, who are a force of poetry, doing this every week, which is a big job, I know. Uh, I'm going to be reading mostly from Flourish, but um, that one, that colorful one. But I also am going to uh, read some other things, too. A uh, coloratura, let me define that just in case. A coloratura is a, a soprano, and it's a certain range of a soprano. Coloratura. The woman next to me in the concert hall does not remember anything for long. She can inhabit only a moment. It doesn't matter. Music is the same way. Her daughter fills in Mama's blanks. Is this your new house, Mama asks? No, says the daughter. We come here to listen to music. When the coloratura walks on stage in a flowing white gown with sparkly heart-shaped bodice and singing high notes, the mother gasps and gasps again two or three times when the soprano ascends yet another octave. The daughter seldom sees her so entranced and takes a picture with her cell phone, making a flash during the concert. At intermission, she apologizes. I am mortified, she says, but we hardly ever see her this way. Mama spreads her hands and says, unmortify, unmortify, it is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you don't have to clap between every poem, and I should watch the clock. Okay. <laughs> Memory. Forgetting looks like a canyon on Mars. The canyon is collapsing. One expects noise, a record of vibrations. No noise or record, except dust settling into valentine lace. How to explain the tracery I keep? Memory is a looking glass I must learn to walk through. There was a girl who walked through mirrors. An illustration shows her dissolving into glass. On either side of the glass, pictures. Do you believe what you see or see what you believe? The pictures in the glass are fragile, their edges rearranging into the next scene, which does not yet exist. The present is hinged. Road. A sound on the road makes me look up. It gets my attention and turns my head. Then the sound is gone. It's tracery, potholes, ruts, displaced gravel. What about cows and cars or your footsteps? I talk to myself on the road and to you, though you are elsewhere. The road itself never makes a sound. There is one road to the nearest town, two roads to the second nearest town. The farther away something is, the more roads go there and the easier it is to get lost. Sometimes I see you on the road, glance-like. We pass each other, trying to be in the same place at the same time. Either I am stopped and you are moving, or you are stopped and I am moving. Road is a customary place to meet, but full of twists and turns. A sound on the road is not the road. Oops. Let me start that again. A picture of the road is not the road. It is a reminder. A picture is the past and cannot possibly be now or the future. Road doesn't care one way or the other about having its picture taken. However, people like to stand in the road and take pictures or else have their own picture taken. I've done it myself. Who hasn't? No matter how many pictures I take, the road never runs out. The road is never finished, therefore you cannot take a picture of its end. It is always under construction and must be imagined. The road becomes water. I take an aerial tram and keep an eye on the ocean through cracks in the floorboards. I expect to take a boat across a different stretch of water to a different island. Destinations change, so does the road. There's more to be said about this. The road moves things along, especially at a crossroad. 
A heart is a kind of crossroad where people can come together. A road is naturally rough. It takes effort to make it smooth. Suddenly all the pebbles rattling and happy. It is the crossroad saying yes. It is easy to get distracted on the road by fuchsia, street lights, or many chickens crossing. Last time the road swerved, I didn't believe it. For two days, I was deep in the brambles, dropped like a ripe blackberry onto the bottom of an empty bucket and making the same sound. Ever push into the thick of it and pick everything that comes off easily? It's a job working your way out. You can't help but take a few thorns. When you're lost in the bushes, it's easy. It's at least you're not in a rut. The road has ruts to spare. Being lost is a good way to figure out where you are. Where was I going versus where the moment itself was going? My fingers are stained, blackberry purple. Road gets sidetracked all the time. Most people find a stretch they like and stay there a while. This is called home. Everything follows its own road, breath, light, sound. If we could come together like sound on the road, like sound we could come together, breath or light. Opal, it resembles greatly sky. Pink and blue lozenge into droplets randomly unless you understand their interlocking mineral growth. Outside of understanding a pink valentine heart, the stillborn's blue. The opal's pinkness and blue concern me here under jewel-making pressure. Does this make sense to you or to anyone else? Else does not matter as much as you. Sense enters through any opening and will supply complete understanding. The space separating us defines close. Opals are fragile, the jeweler said, a soft stone, crazed and prone to crack. Suppose during an important party the stone crumbled from its setting and in tiny <coughs> shards bounced across the parquet. Display and risk. The ring finger bleeds straight into the heart, then through it. Love letter. My dandelion optimism resists uprooting. From the train, I see fields of their yellow interspersed with green. Not green interspersed with yellow. A question of majority yielding to rays that go outward. Consider the fluff, light and hard to stop. I desire to be the fluff unstoppable, bothering your nose, catching your eye like milkweed in the dog days of summer. <clears throat> the ground is soft, full of sprouts, spongy under random follicles. True, all of it. Ask me and no one else, because how would they know? Perhaps you will receive this letter or a version of it. Maybe it will turn up in your magic mailbox. If you risk a letter, it will find me, better yet. I will be here, in this place, at that number, on that street, in this city. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Heist. As if from the corner of a boxer's ring, I want to know what matters to you, because the same thing matters to me. The lines that flow across your face, for instance, your private plans for shelter, favorite textures and shirts, I want to know them, the kind of softness you prefer against your skin, not smooth, but with a nap whose weft rests there easily if you let it. I am not smooth. Consider. We are matched strands of twine tied into a knot. Which of your ridges shall I caress first? Which shall I save until last? You must tell me while I thieve your body. 
salt. I choose salt, a common mineral unfit for jewelry. Its ladder is fragile and vital, which other jewels are not. Salt lives in the blood. It does not care how it is seen, but cares a great deal how it is savored on the tongue. I cannot live without you, jewel of choice. I work myself into your skin so we will last together a long time, older and tougher. I adorn my body with salt. You can ply an animal drawn to the lick. Predators skirt the underbrush, but we ignore them because our hunger is more huge. I wish to be nowhere but with the saltiness of you. When Phil sent out his um, announcement, he included a poem from an earlier book called Island, and it was a series of ragas. Ragas, I kind of just sort of stole the term. It's um, a Indian, a form of music in India that sort of riffs on the same, on a certain theme. Anyway, in the in the email, this was called Raga 5, but I rearranged them in the book, and it's actually Raga 6. <laughs> <laughs> I begin to discern different styles of carved elephants and gods. These have four thick legs with room underneath for a pedestal fifth. Here, divinity's stone wrist has relaxed beyond nature. A white elephant soars into a dream, and above me now, the white plumeria. I expect orchids and teak, not this grove of star blossoms announced by emissary sweetness into the moist air. Five creamy petals thicken to a butter center, then a thousand thousand times proliferate, jostling into galaxies suspended overhead. My head reaches the Buddha's immense crossed shins. I could brush my cheek against the fingers draped earthward and tipped with gold. His chest fills with incense. I've seen it happen when stones meditate, they assume the shape of breath. Even the dullest pebble can become the nipple erect on a god's soft breast. Tremble. Amorous, the caving in, lustrous as her hair, dazzling his eyes forward from a scene that dissolves to the pink ball flowers overhanging the patio where she chooses to sit taking him beyond where he usually goes, and so she does, believing that the flowering pinkness overhead might be, in fact, her body. Uh, Phil mentioned that I uh, do a workshop in Joshua Tree once a year, usually. And I also, separate from this, I applied for a writer, well, they have an artist in residence program at Joshua Tree. You can apply. Um, but you know, they have painters, photographers, musicians, occasionally a poet. But anyway, um, I w was able to be there for three weeks living in the park. And um, the place I was staying was literally off the map. It wasn't, didn't have public access, but right next to it was um, a supply station for the rangers that were working there in search and rescue. So when I was staying there, they were having a, exercises with tracking for two days. And I just kind of got brave. And the second day, I asked if I could sort of listen. I said, oh, sure. And um, then when they went out on a tracking exercise, they took me with them. So. Um, <clears throat> I have, two tra I have two fictionalized tracking <laughs> poems. I hope they don't overlap each other too much. But. So first tracking poem. 
my unease about not knowing where to go. Your destination shifted and you are late, missing or lost. And we are hunting your lostness, footprint by footprint. Sometimes nothing on 10 yards of hard dirt. Then a toe dig where you swivel to avoid a thicket of spiny cat's claw and drop a few crumbs unintentionally for you are not a fairy tale character marking the path home, but bounding, dear two-footed animal, until your body says stop, and you do. Our cue to enter the maze you have created, yourself at the center, and we the small beads turning this way and that, searching for your direction of travel, your path, which is, for now, our own. Another tracking poem. Noon casts no shadow. We make our own on dirt the color of pewter, raw silk, and curry. Your prints ridged and unique point north. This is the kind of thing I would do. Head for the road and turn 90 degrees the other direction. On a bush, red evidence and brittle orange in the dirt. Call us on your cell, promise to come back. You go beyond the place where you should stop, your position transferred, florid, scented with juniper berries soaked in tequila. Our formations are wrong, we trample fragile shrubs, lose and find you again parched, lacerated, burnt under a column of shade. All of which may be reversed. Night. Our shadows sharp on the bright snow. You are seated behind a rock we cannot yet see around, building a fire. It is we who come in need to you. Um, I took one out of order. Oh, gasp. Um, this is another one that came out of that experience. I was there during moth season which is not long and is not pleasant. You know, it's amazing how much insect life is out there and how they are attracted to light. And when your light is the only thing around for, who knows, 20 miles, you are, you know, every, every flying insect in the area is there. Anyway, <clears throat> again, a creative generation of that situation. Unmoth. The morning routine, so that dries on its way to your body. Then cleaning up the insects lining the lamp's inner rim and whatever gave light or moisture, like the bedside scented oil coated with winged spots, the sinks, tub, and adjacent surfaces. Though there's a sharp decrease over the past two days, so perhaps this has been their season and they are fluttering towards the next stage of mothness making more of themselves, transient as torn lettuce, as an ant's ginger mound on a dirt road, lingering as one left suddenly alone, as drops of oil isolated on a tile floor and never absorbed. Sidestep just for a moment, winding sideways in loping S's, the early breeze embryonic, soft as a cat's ear brushing your cheek with a hint of cucumber, disentangling, strewing the powdered veil under which you have lived. That's the end of the desert. <laughs> Here, we board a train. The train is going a different place than the train, than the place we want to go. I'll start that over. We board a train. The train is going a different place than the place we want to go. At one point, we look at each other, get off, and change tracks. Here was a train going the wrong direction. It turns out OK, but takes longer than normal or expected. Changing platforms turns me around. A statement and its reversed are usually somewhat true. I'm swept in the backdraft of a train. 
Eventually, we arrive where we thought we would. When we arrive, we see pictures. A woman dressed in white waits on the platform. She stays very clean. In a flash, everything is clear. Let me be literal. Light travels fast, and I stay in my own slow space, waiting it out. While I wait, light traveling from another place arrives. The light that went ahead arrives somewhere else. The light that came from somewhere else is here. To wrap it up with this one. Incognito. A cab parked at the curb, driver nowhere to be seen. Like the spokes inside an uncut lemon, like absence neutral as the beige ruin of a suburban tract house, as interconnected malls that occupy multiple city blocks, four levels above and two below. I want to find the joie de vivre motel, where every night the contents of cabinets rearrange, where 180 Darwinian finches trill the same cadence at different speeds, where doors fly open like uncorked champagne, tilt like orange and azure bird of paradise beaks, where we live incognito abundantly and at home. Thank you so much.